Hey everybody, what's going on? Julie Murphy here and 25 plus years of being a financial planner, I've learned a couple things and the biggest one is that we either work things out or we act it out and we do it through our money, through our health or through our relationships. And today I want to go through financial perspective because so many people don't realize how we are the creators of our lives and it all depends on your perspective. Before I do that and walk you through this, these three areas of perspective that I want you to consider, um, hit that notification bell, subscribe, and like. Why? Because um, I'm going to help you get to a life that you absolutely love because you deserve it. And so many people are not living their lives from a place of what makes them happy today. And I think it has all to do with our financial perspective. For years, um, I have realized that the only reason that you change from an employer relationship that's not serving you today, or you don't change um, your health, um, that you just keep going along the track you're going on, or in a marriage or a relationship that's no longer serving you, the reason we don't shift is because we don't have a compelling reason to change that's big enough. And um, it's usually because of our patterning that has to do with, I don't feel loved, I'm not enough, or um, I don't feel worthy. And consciously, most of us don't know this. And this is why these three perspectives um, of how we view financials um, are really important. Uh, patterns that I've seen over the years. I talk about often that um, there are the poor, the debtors, the dreamers, the accumulators, and the rich but empty. And everyone who isn't quote unquote rich always feels like, oh, once I get there and I get this money and blah, 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 then this is going to happen. And guess what? You get to that point, you're now a rich but empty because you could retire or you're good with your kid's college or whatever it is that you're planning on. You get to that place and you still have this emptiness inside. Why? Because it's about perspective. And um, when we are the creators of our lives, we have to find that compelling reason for change. And so if you change your perspective on how you're looking at life, your financial world's going to change. I guarantee it. Why? Because we have to realize if we talk about our financial past or anything in our past for that matter, we only recreate it in the present moment. And then that's what we create for tomorrow because you're bringing the past in today. I had this conversation yesterday with a couple of my sisters and um, we were sitting at lunch and we were talking about how when, if you keep doing this, well, then you're going to keep getting this. So like you have to really almost zero out all of those memories that you have, whatever money story you have or relationship story you have or employment relationship story. I mean, aren't there a lot of stories these days? I mean, comment below of all the stories that we hear today that you may go like, oh my God, that is my truth. That is true. And you're trying to get everybody else to understand that it's true because you're defending your position. These are all stories. And we do this same thing with our money. You know, if you watch some of my series on um, Awaken Your Relationships, I have a relationship expert on there who often talks about that when we're trying to control or entrain other people, it's just the way you're responding to stress. We become a people pleaser. We try to fix it. We disassociate or we try to control and, and train. There's five different ways that we try to control our stress and every human being responds in one of those fashions. Again, not good or bad. Stay neutral, stay agnostic. But if you want to create a different financial world for yourself, you have got to create a different perspective. Because the perspective that you have had thus far has gotten you exactly where you're at. I was reading something recently that I'd like to share. We talk about, so if you're a type of person, there's the three perspectives. This is number one. Okay, ready? So number one, if you talk all about money all the time, if like if money is your focus, the pattern that is noticed over time 
is that you probably don't have enough money because you're talking about money all the time. You're talking about maybe like how your employer screwed you over on bonuses or you didn't get the pay raise you were supposed to. Somehow, some way, you know, too much tax is being paid. What is your financial story? Are you talking about money all the time? Because it's probably highlighting your not enough button or your not worthy button. And then you talk about it more. And when we talk, think, and feel about money all the time or the lack there of money all the time, you probably don't have enough money. So if you want to have money, you have to change your financial perspective to create money. Okay. So perspective number two is if you talk about things, you know, like the Western world here, like, holy crap, like, do we talk about things or what? Like we have a lot of income affluence in the world, but we're not all fully asset affluent, but you might have enough to get through the day, right? So you're not necessarily talking about money all the time because you have enough to get through, but you're talking about things. It's like, oh, the bigger house, the bigger car, the this, the that, what's for the kids and camps and blah, 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 blah. And I understand a lot of these financial perspectives post pandemic have um, changed a little bit. Right. Our perspectives have changed. I mean, there's a reason why there's trillions of dollars now sitting in savings accounts around the world, because we're not spending what we used to spend. So everybody is redefining their things. And um, so if you're a person who talks about things all the time and you still have just enough, well, consider shifting your perspective from there as well. Because there's enough abundance for all of us. We live in a world where there is unlimited abundance. The question is, are you calling it or not? So if you're talking about money going for perspective number one, what you're doing is you are actually reinforcing that you don't have enough money. Because you talk about money all the time. And that's actually the quintessential thing that's actually blocking you from getting the money. Perspective number two is you're talking about things all the time and you have just enough. Why are you tired of having just enough? Like, what about creating space, right? Create the space. The third perspective is the fact that you talk about ideas. You decide, you talk about what you're going to create, not what you're going to buy, not what you don't have. You're talking about ideas. Like, I was on a phone conversation yesterday. It was so funny. I spent the morning by myself and I was like, all these ideas were coming in. I was like, gee, 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 gee. they were just flowing in. I was like, oh yeah, this is boom, 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 boom. And I was like, I saw the whole road of what I wanted to create next. And I was like, all these pieces came together and all these ideas. And I'm like, this is super exciting. High vibe. I'm up there and I'm like, da, 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 da. and then I talked to somebody and I was like, and they literally cut me off right in the middle of my brainstorming and sharing and blah, blah. blah. And they're like, yeah, so my day, and they decided to talk about how traffic sucked and this sucked and that sucked. And I was like, wow. It also showed me that if you're not strong in your own perspective, how much you can be pulled off the tracks of your own life because of somebody else's perspective. Think about that. How much have you been pulled off of the perspective of your own life because somebody came in and took you off the tracks and you allowed it to happen? I'm telling you, I see this a lot. I see this in client appointments. I'll watch often that one person in a marriage is way stronger than the other one, particularly finance. And then one person's apologizing. Sorry, I don't really pay attention to it. Like they have this shame and blame and judgment around their money. And we don't have to do that, but it's because they have negotiated themselves away to their spouse. And they just defer to that other person because they think that they're not enough or they don't have something covered. And then it's like, hmm, is that really what I want to create? Well, I'm going to challenge you and I am going to get you to drill down into what that heart's desire is. 
because this goes back to what I originally was talking about. What's your compelling reason for change? You have to change your perspective to get back into alignment with what that is. So do me a favor. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button, like, and notification bell, because I'm going to help you get to a life that you absolutely love. Thanks, everybody.